But today was a difficult watch just because I was raised watching the three wide, 10 deep Talladega and Daytona races. And they were 100%, maybe 90 or 80% throttle throughout the whole entire field. So we just finished up the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway in a race I'm calling the fuel saving fiasco. A lot of off throttle time plus a lot of excited and happy people after an exciting finish and an even more exciting post race at Talladega Super Speedway. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, let me know what you thought of this video. What did you think of the fuel saving at Talladega Super Speedway? What did you think of the post race, Tyler Reddick's victory and celebration with Michael Jordan? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. All right, let's kind of get straight to the point on this one because I'm a little bit upset with the way the super speedway racing has been going as of late in the NASCAR Cup Series. Once again, at Talladega Super Speedway, like at Daytona earlier on in the year and last year at the super speedways, once again, this race turned into a what I like to call a fuel-saving fiasco. That's what this race turned into. A lot of drivers, a lot of off throttle time driving around 60%, 50%, 40%, all these different percentages that aren't 100% throttle at a track that's known for that. What is going on here? Over the many years of super speedway racing, we've seen super speedway racing change over time and develop into something else. And what the super speedway racing has developed into today is very disappointing. The team's primary focus out there today at Talladega Super Speedway was to get the quickest pit stop possible. So for a good portion of the day, you saw most drivers off throttle. So if you put the race on mute and didn't really pay attention to the graphics at all, you would have honestly thought this was an old fashioned Talladega Daytona race because they were racing three wide throughout most of the field, throughout most of the event today at Talladega Super Speedway. But throughout most of this race, the drivers were driving anywhere in between 53 and 55 second lap times. While in qualifying, they were running around 51 second lap times. It was really horrible to see and made most of this race, honestly, not really noteworthy. We saw Ford have some success today early winning stage number one and stage number two. Stage number one going to Austin Sindrick. Stage number two going to his Penske teammate of Joey Logano. And for the first 130 laps of this race, it was completely uneventful because of the fuel saving. We didn't really see any incidents. A lot of very calm, cool, collected racing from these Cup Series veterans and rookies. We saw multiple drivers lead this race that you wouldn't expect to be out front. You saw Anthony Alfredo up there a little bit. You saw BJ McLeod. How about that? That was really cool to see. Daniel Hemrick led a decent amount of this race. and Probably the dominant driver of the day. It's honestly not a huge surprise is Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell had a really strong race. He's a proven super speedway racer. He's won the Daytona 500 for Pete's sake. But anytime we come to a super speedway, he always proves to be a threat for the victory, whether it's Talladega, Daytona, or even Atlanta. We'll talk more about Michael McDowell in a little bit. But those last 50 laps of the race is where it began to get a little bit eventful as we had an incident with a little over 50 laps remaining caused by a huge checkup on the high lane looked like chase elliott got into the back of justin haley was unable to slow down quick enough for the huge checkup causing a pretty small accident we ended up taking christopher bell out of the race christopher bell i mentioned last week it's been a really difficult season for him he just hasn't been very consistent throughout the season he's gotten himself into a lot of trouble and I know this incident wasn't any of his doing. He was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. But the difficult season 
for Christopher Bell continues and this has kind of been a story throughout his whole career he's a very strong very talented race car driver but it seems like he's either in the top five competing for the win or he's behind the wall before the checkered flag even waves so this looked like he could potentially set up a fuel saving finish because it looked like these drivers could make it around 40 something laps and it was going to set up around a 50 lap shootout to the finish if these drivers saved enough fuel they could have either come really close to coming to the finish where they could just top off or potentially a driver or two could have even tried to make it to the finish. I don't think anybody would have made it, but we could have potentially seen a driver attempt to do it. But we saw an interesting strategy from the Toyotas and I really liked this strategy and I was really curious on why some drivers weren't trying it. What it looked like Toyota was going to try to do is pit really early on to the point where they knew they could make it on fuel and just drive it 100%. The rest of the way while most of the field is trying to save fuel to make it just to quickly top off well they made their pit stops the toyotas there were six toyotas that decided to go with this strategy and make their pit stops and while they're driving 100 percent on the track working really hard in the draft trying to get as much time as they can they ended up causing an incident it's really hard to say exactly what caused this incident but i would lean towards john hunter nemechek potentially caused this incident bump drafting from the fourth place in the line i'm not sure how well it works with these cars i would assume it doesn't work great bump drafting from the fourth or fifth position in line it's been proven over time that that doesn't really work but it looked like john hunter nemechek caused a chain reaction taking out both eric jones and bubba wallace with him also involved is denny hamlin i haven't really mentioned him at all but he was definitely one of the favorites coming into today's race as he is at every super speedway he had some damage on his number 11 machine it looked like to me he could potentially continue but he actually ended up exiting the race as well in the number 11 fedex toyota so really difficult day for toyota a lot of drivers taken out christopher bell being taken out earlier on in the race there's very few toyota drivers left in the field at this point but what this would set up is a race to the finish. Every driver that hadn't made a pit stop yet can come down pit lane, top off on fuel, get tires if they want to, and we can see a 100% throttle finish. <laughs> Can't believe I actually had to say that, but today was a difficult watch just because I was raised watching the three wide, 10 deep Talladega and Daytona races, and they were 100% maybe 90 or 80% throttle throughout the whole entire field. And they weren't 80 or 90% because they were saving fuel. They were 80 or 90% that, that way they didn't wreck the driver in front of them. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad. You keep digging. Yeah, clearly I can, I can rant about that all day. Let me get back to the race. Now the very end portion of this race looked to be dominated by, I mentioned him earlier, Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell seemed to maybe be the fastest car throughout the day. And it looked like in those final laps that it was going to finally be Ford's day to get to victory lane. Ford has yet to go to victory lane in any of the three NASCAR series. They have yet to win a Craftsman Truck Series race. They have yet to win an Xfinity Series race or a Cup Series race ever since they swept the championship at Phoenix in November. And it's been extremely difficult on the Cup Series side because Ford introduced the new Ford Mustang Dark Horse to the Cup Series. And they're seeing Toyota with all their success with their new Toyota Camry. And they have yet to get to victory lane. And it looked like in those final laps that Ford was going to finally get to victory lane with a couple of drivers in the very front coming off turn four coming to the checkered flag. Yeah, coming to the checkered flag, you had Michael McDowell, Brad Keselowski, and Noah Gregson all with a decent shot at the victory. But it looked like what had happened, Michael McDowell threw a couple blocks on Brad Keselowski, and on that second block, Brad Keselowski was getting a push from Noah Gregson. Michael McDowell cut down right in front of Brad Keselowski and just barely made contact with him, just enough to send him into the outside wall. I was mentioning with a few laps to go that we had yet to see the big one and we saw a huge accident at the finish of this race. 
Corey LaJoy was riding on the side of his car across the start finish line, literally looked like a scene from a racing movie. But with all that destruction and all that madness coming through the trioval, Tyler Reddick was able to make a move for the race lead, avoiding the incident and getting his first victory of the season. Tyler Reddick, I've mentioned a couple of times this season, might be one of the most talented drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series field and has came really close to winning a couple races so far this season. Tyler Reddick's biggest issue so far this season has been his inability to finish races. And here we come to a track where Tyler Reddick tends to not have a lot of success. I wouldn't consider Tyler Reddick to be one of the quality super speedway drivers in the field. I wouldn't put him on the same level as like a Kyle Larson and Martin Truex Jr. who always seem to find trouble at the super speedways. But I definitely would not put him on the same level as like a Denny Hamlin or a Bubba Wallace or a Brad Keselowski. But he was at the right place at the right time coming off of turn four, ended up winning his first race of the season at Talladega Super Speedway. And the post race for this race was fantastic. What a beautiful and fantastic moment for the sport. Probably the biggest, most popular, most well-known athlete in the world, Michael Jordan. He was a huge part of this post race as he had never been at the track yet for a victory for 2311 racing. Of course, just a few years ago, Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin teamed up to develop 2311 racing. And over the last couple of years, Michael Jordan has been to a decent amount of races, but is yet to be there for a victory. Ever since selling his ownership stake in the Charlotte Hornets, we've seen him at a lot more of these Cup Series races, but he's still yet to be there for his first Cup Series victory and his first celebration in victory lane. And we saw a beautiful moment, him holding Tyler Reddick's son, Bo, not just after he crossed the start finish line, but also held him in victory lane. A beautiful moment held between him, Reddick, Denny Hamlin. I even saw Bubba Wallace sneak into victory lane as well. A very big moment for 2311 racing. A great moment for the sport. And this is definitely going to get a lot more eyes and a lot more fans on board when it comes to NASCAR. Like I mentioned, Michael Jordan is one of the biggest figures in the world. And 2311 racing has won races before. It's not like this is the very first win for 2311 racing. But Michael Jordan has never been part of the celebration on Sunday. Apparently there was even an inside joke between Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin that Michael Jordan was bad luck for the team. But today he was able to break through and celebrate in victory lane for his very first time in a beautiful, fantastic moment for the sport. So congratulations to Tyler Reddick and the whole 2311 racing team, the number 45 team. This is my favorite one so far. Nice job, team. But what did you think of the race? I don't think everybody's going to agree with me saying that it's such a horrible race. I just know what it used to be. I know what speeds they used to run. I know that they're off throttle a lot of this race. But like I said, if you had the race on mute or if even you're someone that hasn't really seen a lot of super speedway racing, you probably really enjoyed the race at Talladega Super Speedway today. And if you did... I'm jealous. I wish I enjoyed the race like that. But overall, let me know in the comments what you thought of the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. What did you think of the fuel saving? What did you think of Tyler Reddick's victory and Michael Jordan's celebration in victory lane? Next week, we head to Dover, Dover Motor Speedway. That should be an interesting race. I'm real interested to see how these cars do at Dover Motor Speedway this time around. I personally really enjoy Dover because it's a track really based on tires. Who knows? We could even get a Bristol tire. I just thought of that. That just popped in my mind. There's a possibility we could have the Bristol tire at Dover. That would be insane. But even if we don't have the Bristol tire, I expect we would have a pretty decent race at Dover. At least the best race we've had over the last five or six weeks. Because we've fallen into a pretty bad rut when it comes to these races, at least with the older fans. I think a lot of the newer fans potentially enjoyed these last couple of races, but a lot of us fans that have been around for a while did not enjoy Texas, did not enjoy Richmond or Martinsville, and did not enjoy Talladega. I appreciate anybody who tuned into this video. Now we're on to Dover, 
My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.